Okay, so real quick before we learn our first song, which is going to be London Bridges on page, page 10 of the book. Real quick, I just wanted to point out that your practice chanter does come apart, in case you haven't noticed that before. I've had students before whose chanters I took apart and it was like they didn't realize that they could come apart. By now, if you've been practicing for long enough in any one sitting, you might have started to hear some gurgling noises from your chanter. That's because the reed is getting really wet from condensation from your breath. You might have even had spit start to bubble out of some of the uh, uh, upper holes of the chanter, and, and that probably grossed you out a little bit. Um, that happens, and so some chanters have a, uh, a water trap, which is a nicer way to say a spit trap, um, and those do help, um, but they don't stop all moisture from getting through. Eventually you will have these issues if you play for long enough in one sitting. Some chanters don't have a moisture trap at all, um, and that's, you know, that's, fi that's fine, but they just, that condensation just gets all over your reed and starts coming down through the chanter all the more quickly. So there are different kinds of spit traps. Um, R.G. Hardy makes a really cool one called the twist trap that threads together. So you would take the top half of your chanter out and then unscrew the, the spit trap and then, you know, dump out the spit and let it dry. A lot of the others are basically just inserted inside of the bulb of the chanter. And if you can imagine like an uppercase uh, letter I, but then like sort of turned on its Z axis so that it becomes a, a uh, like a, a, a 3D shape and then cut a chunk out of the top and put a hole down the middle that's more or less the way a lot of those will work, where air can go through, but a lot of the condensation gets gathered inside of that trap that the, the 3D letter I shape thing makes. Probably not a super clear explanation. Basically, you might have a water trap, you might not. It doesn't really matter too much. What I'm trying to get at is you should always, when you're done playing, find a safe place to put your instrument and take it apart. Blow out. Sometimes you have to turn the, the bulb upside down and blow it in reverse to get the spit out if you have a trap in there. Do whatever you have to to get the spit out and then let the pieces and parts dry. I've had so many gross experiences opening up a chanter that's been closed. And I mean, if you keep that space dark and damp, of course you're going to have mold growing. And it's gross. It's also a health hazard. So take your chanter apart regularly, like every time you play. Clean it. Let it dry then you can put it together the next time you play. A lot of the Polypenko or Durlin uh, chanters are uh, dishwasher safe. I'm not saying yours is, so be careful. Uh, check before you do something like that, but they're all gonna be hand wash safe. Keep them clean. If you've got a wood chanter, take good care of it. Um, you know, you might wanna be more gentle with how you clean it or oil it after you clean it. You know, just uh, check with the maker if you're not sure how to take good care of your chanter, but do take good care of it. Keep it clean for your health and for the for the sanity of the your bandmates or your or your private instructor if you have one you don't want to be spilling nasty moldy spit all over other people or anything like that and for your own sake for heaven's sake all right for everybody's sakes let's move on from that and we will work on london bridges so again you can i'll try to link some good articles or videos in the description below for uh how to count uh music and uh, some other music theory stuff that goes a bit beyond the scope of this course but if you've, if, if you've never done music before, and this is completely new, here's a really brief description of what you're looking at with London Bridges. At the very beginning of the top line, you have a kind of curly S looking kind of shape. That's a treble clef. Uh, it just denotes that you're playing in the treble clef. You don't have to worry much about that with bagpipes because all your music will always be in the treble clef. So sometimes you'll see that at the beginning of a tune. Sometimes you won't because it's just assumed. Uh, you just don't play in the bass clef for uh, bagpipes. So next to that, you have the letter C. Um, in this case, that letter C is an abbreviation for common time. Common time is 4-4. Four, four. So you, the alternative here is you'd see a 4 above another 4. Like we talked about before, a, um, a, a note on the staff that is a filled-in circle with a, with a straight line below it um, is a quarter note, and it's worth one, one clap or one snap, one beat. Uh, the open circle is a half note that's worth two, now, if you look in that first measure, you'll see there's a quarter note with a tiny dot next to it. That means that it's worth one and a half. And the next note is a quarter note, but with a fancy little flag underneath it. That means it's worth one half. So that's an eighth note. So we have a dotted quarter note followed by an eighth note, then a quarter note, then a quarter note. So if we were snapping, that common time means that every measure has four snaps in it or four quarter notes in it. So if you look along that top line and the bottom line, the second line, each is divided into four measures. So the space in between two vertical lines is a measure. 
And in that space, you will have the mathematical value of four quarter notes. But it might be broken up in different ways. So in the first two measures, we have two different ways. We have one and a half with that dotted quarter note. Then we have a half, so total is two so far. Then we have a one and a one, so there's our total of four. Then in the next measure, we have a one, another one, and then a half note, which is worth two quarter notes, so that's four. And we've got numbers written in along the top of the, of the music to help you count along. So if we were singing, and bonus for you, I won't charge you any extra. I'm, you get to hear me sing now. I'm, I'm not great at playing bagpipes. I'm even worse at singing. So uh, good luck to you surviving this. So if we're counting it off, we got one, two, three, four. That's our, our uh, pace that we're going to be sticking with for this. So if I were to sing the first two measures with the lyrics to London Bridges, London bridges falling down. So what's going on there if we count it? One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... Okay, take those ands out that are subdividing the one, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, three, four. And the whole song carries on like that. So there's a brief description. Let's try playing it. So from the beginning, we've got an E, and then we go briefly up to F, back to E. Let's just do that far. Here we go. One, two, ready, and. Pretty simple. You probably got that pretty quick. So the next note, though, goes from E to D. That's one of those difficult transition notes. So let's just do that transition a couple times before we insert it into the music. So we're just going to go E, D, E, D. Let's do it three times. Okay, so now in the music, we go E, short F, back to E, and then down to D. Here we go. Ready, and. Good, let's do that measure one more time. Ready, and. Very good, so the next measure, we go from D down to C and back to D. Pretty simple. But then we have another of those difficult transition notes where we go from D to E. So let's practice that transition a couple times. D up to E. Here we go. Three times. One more. Good. I had a little bit of a crossover there, so watch your crossovers. Um, not just because I had one. Just, uh, just remember to watch those crossovers. Okay, so picking up from... We're going to go from the last note in the first measure. That's a D. We're going to go from there to the C that starts the second measure, then the D that's right in the middle of the second measure, and then the E that finishes the second measure. So we're going D, C, D, E. Here we go together. Okay, let's count it off. Ready, and. Okay, let's work it from the very beginning of the song. And we'll go that far. One, two, ready, and. Let's do that again. We'll do it two more times. Ready, and. Good. And again. Ready, and. Good. This is a good spot if you want to work that, through that a few more times to pause the video, work through it a few more times, and then we'll pick up with measure three. So measure three, let's do the transition actually from measure two to measure three. So measure two ends on an E, 
And from there we go to B. So that's a bit tricky, it's all ring fingers. One ring finger starts up and the other down, and then they swap. So let's do that three times. We'll just go E, B, E, B. Mine's gonna fall asleep. Okay. Ready? Well, no, sorry, we're not gonna count this one off. We're just gonna go E, B, all together. Here we go. Okay, that's that's kind of a funky one. We might not have done that at all yet. So let's let's work on that a couple times. Let's do that three more times. This is another we gotta watch for crossovers. We don't wanna hear this. We also don't wanna hear. Ooh, not sure what happened just now. Sorry. Here we go. E to B, two more times. Okay, one more. Good. So let's try moving on from there. So we end the second measure with E, start the third with B, and then it's pretty simple. From B we just go to C and then to D. So let's go E, B, C, D. Here we go. Ready? And, and, and we'll, we'll count this one out so it's a uh, half note. So E, B, C, D. One, two, ready, and. Let's do that one more time. Ready, and. Now let's finish off the line and then we'll go back and do the whole line all together. So we finished measure three with a D. We start measure four with a C. That's a pretty easy transition. And from there, we just go back to D and then up to E. Okay, so let's try that all together. Ready, and. We'll do it two more times together. Feel free to pause the video and go through it a couple times on your own. Ready, and. Okay, one more time together. Ready, and. Good, watch those crossovers. I think I just really had a tiny one again. Okay, from the beginning of the line, really slow. We're gonna go London bridges falling down, falling down. Falling down. Okay. Um, this is a, actually, I think this is a genuinely useful exercise. This is how my kids learn piano. Sing this, or at least say it along with me, okay? We're gonna say the note names. Ready, and. E, F, E, D, C, D, E, B, C, D, C, D, E, Okay, let's try playing it. We'll do it slower than that though, okay? I'm gonna go like. One, two, ready, and. Pause the video and go through that a few times. We're gonna do it again. Here we go. One, two, ready, and. Okay, one more time. One, two, ready, and. Okay, so here's the cool thing. Work on that top line a bunch of times, and when you feel great about it, 
you've pretty much got the second line already. Here's how the second line runs through. First measure matches the first measure of the first line exactly. So does the second measure. So you've already learned both those measures. The third measure is just two half notes. You go from B to E. Again, it's that ring finger transition, so it can be challenging, but it's two half notes, so you have a lot of time to think about where you're going before you go there. And then the last measure, C to low A. Now, what you see there is the C is a quarter note, so it's worth one count. That low A is a dotted half note, right? So the half note is worth two quarter notes, and the dot means that it gets the note's value plus one half of that value. So two plus 0.5 is three. So where the quarter note is worth one, that dotted half note is worth three, we got four, so that's a complete measure. So let's play through just the second line together really slow, and then we'll try the whole thing together. So beginning of the second line, here we go. One, two, ready, and. Good. We're going to do it one more time like that. So we'll do it just a little bit faster and then we'll do the whole song. So pause it wherever you need to, to go over parts, little sections that might be hard, and we'll move on. Ready? And. Do that second line a little bit faster. One, two, ready, and. All right, let's do the whole song. So right from the beginning, nice and slow. One, two, ready, and. <laughs> I guess <laughs> we kind of have to pause at the end of that first line so that we can start with an E on the next line again. So. You want to play smoothly from note to note in the majority of cases, but later we'll start learning, learning grace notes that'll separate notes. We haven't learned any yet, so just take a small breath at the end of the first line. So uh, let's, let's start again, right from the beginning of, that, of the song. Here we go. One, two, ready, and. So this brings up a good point that I probably should have addressed earlier. When you're playing the bagpipes, the flow of air is constant. And so there's no way for you to do something like this. Like you couldn't go. That can be fun on your practice chanter, but there's no way to do it on the bagpipes. Or at least it's very difficult on the bagpipes. Um, and it's not typically done. And so as much as you can, you want to just take a big breath and just play the notes smooth from one to the next. And as I said, later we're gonna learn embellishments that can separate notes. But for now, you just wanna play smooth through. If you need to take a breath, of course take a breath. During practice uh, with your band, people will be taking breaths all the time. And you just kinda keep playing with your fingers, take a breath, and, and just blow again, and you just kinda carry on. You don't have to stop the music, to take a breath, and then start the music again, right? So it might look something like this.
So that's a bit exaggerated, but you can see how like I'm breathing, but my fingers are still playing along uh, as if as if nothing had changed, right? All right, so let's do that whole song one more time, a little bit faster, and then just work on it on your own um, until you feel comfortable with it before moving on to the next exercise. Here we go. One, two, ready, and. There you go. You're a bagpiper. You know a song. <laughs>